So now it's starting to shape up. So we've got the outside machined. We got the inside machined. Uh, if we take a quick look at the last operation we have here, um, the next thing from a milling standpoint is we have this excess material in each of these corners. So there's excess material on all the corners inside this thing. So probably what we want to do is we want to run a, a rest machining operation. Now, of course, from a Spree 2000 series, we remember the, the method you would do there is you would pick the feature or the operation, pick the feature, and you would go up to milling, and you would tell it to do a, a rest machining operation. But now, if you look, you don't see rest machining. There's no pull down here, so it's not hidden under some other menu. What you find is that rest machining is not in a Spree TNG. So the question is, how do you clean out these corners? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do another pocket. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in this pocket operation we're going to do, we're going to choose a smaller tool. In this case, we're going to tell it to do a quarter-inch end mill, six-millimeter end mill, per se. So a smaller end mill. So we grab the quarter-inch end mill. Do we want to rough the rough passes? I'll just want to do some wall finishes. Uh, use the previous stock, yes. That would be very important here in this case. Strategy, here I want to tell it to just do contouring, say concentric, uh, concentric uh, out. Uh, now we've got our depth of cut. Let me put in an incremental depth of cut. We want to plug one in here. Let's say we want an incremental depth of cut of, let's say, oh, let's say uh, 0 0.120 or uh, 3 millimeters. Let's, now, here we want to do our incremental depth calculation as probably varying as needed. Machine priority region and uh, rapid above partial, that's fine. Pocket, nothing there. Wall finish. It's got feeds and speeds in there already at each Z level. Cutter comp settings and lead and lead out settings. We'll use those values as defaults. Those will work fine. And on the links page, we're going to leave it on clearance of 0.1. Now, right now, uh, if, you're, if you're an experienced Spree 2000 series user, you're seeing a red flag by me doing this. But that's okay. Let's hit our OK button and let it proceed with another pocket. Now, this doesn't make sense to do another pocket here, but if you look at the result, it kind of does. You know, if you look at it, that is what rest machining would do. So as you can see, there's not really a necess necessity for rest machining because rest machining is going to get done as a pocket operation here. So you can see how it's doing that in there, doing that as a pocket. Now we also have it on the outside of the part, this perimeter of the part has got some areas. Even these pockets have got some areas here. So what we could do is take that operation and do a right-click copy and maybe put it onto this feature group. Now you can see that, of course, it created a feature group. No surprise. Uh, when we did all four, five of these pockets at the same time, it made a sixth pocket as a parent. So we do a right-click and a paste. Now it's going to go through and it's going to add rest machining pockets, if you will, to those other pockets. And what you'll notice is, uh, which is I think really clever here, you'll notice that it's only adding, in this case, only one operation because there was only one of those pockets that actually needed rest machining to clean out the corners. There's only one of those that was small enough that needed it. Now, is that small enough to get everything done? It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it's cleaning up here, does it? So let's go back and do another rest machining up here at the top on this first pocket. Do another pocketing operation. This time let's grab a smaller tool. Let's go down to the eighth inch end mill, three millimeter end mill. Same settings on this page. Strategy, same settings. You might go shallower. I'll leave the same numbers for, for now. Wall finish, feed speeds are being adjusted. Leave those numbers alone. Same with my clearances. I'll leave those alone. Let's hit OK. See if it finds any material. So we're going to let it look for material. And in this case, it found material in those two corners, and it found material in these corners. Now we can see if there's any material left behind on the other corners. We do that by simply grabbing that last operation, copy, paste it to the feature group, and put it here. And go around the perimeter. See what it finds there. It should now add a third, and it did. It added a third operation right here. Put one on this because it found that there was an area that the smaller tool needed to come in and clean out that corner. 
Now, what about the perimeter? Now, the perimeter is a little different in that it's not a pocket. It's, it's a contour. So it's a profile. So it really, I can't do a pocket. But why, why not can I go up and do another contour operation? Well, let's try what a contour operation would be. So we're going to tell it to do a contour operation with a smaller tool. Let's try that quarter inch end mill. So grab a quarter inch end mill. And I'm going to say use previous stock, yes. Okay. Strategy, uh, depth of cut. Uh, I'll use the same number, and the depth here, let's use the same number here. We'll leave those the numbers as they were. Uh, finish page, I'll leave all those there. Uh, pass exist at, um, let's go ahead and say this to be at each Z level. This is a, meant to be a cleanup, and links are just for clearance. And let's hit OK, see what happens, see if it gives any kind of toolpath. So what it's doing now is it's creating toolpath, and what it created here was rest machining. So in essence, oh, my mouse there, pick, there we go. See, it put a rest machine in that corner, and it also came around to these other corners where there was material remaining. So by doing a second contouring operation or a second pocket operation uh, with the used previous stock turned on, it turns both contouring and pocketing into rest machining, thus no need for rest machining anymore. And I think what's really nice about that, what I really like, is that now this operation is a separate operation, and it's not actually tied to the depth of the operation that it's, that it's being used on. You know, one, of the, one of the problems we've always had in the 2000 series was that when you did, profit, when you did rest machining, um, the depth was not a field that was there. You had incremental depth but it would get the depth from the operation that was cutting it. Well, here I could make this different. I could Here I could just do a right-click system default and maybe go only go just a little bit past. Maybe you just go 0.440. Maybe I don't want to scrape the bottom. So I'm making this depth a different depth than the cut that went around the perimeter. And so that's what we have here. You see how it's got a little step here? So I didn't go quite as deep. I went deep enough to get down past the bottom of the part, but not any deeper to get down to the very bottom. So that's actually a pretty neat, uh, neat idea, I think, in, in, uh, in seeing and recognizing the fact that really, if managed properly, additional pocket and contouring with, with more superior uh, um, intelligence at looking at the, the stock that's remaining uh, negates the need for rest machining. So I, I think this is great. There's no rest machining necessary. Okay, so that gets that operation out of the way. So now, the next thing we have is, if we think about this, we now have really all the milling out of the way. Uh, we're ready now to come in and do some drilling. Now, it's getting a little busy, so I'll go into this list, and I will, I will right-click Select All, and I'll turn on one of the checkboxes, which will hide all those operations. Now, they're all still there. If I pick an operation, I can see the tool path that's, that's left over behind by that operation. So, so you know, you still have the toolpath there. It's just I've turned them off to be hidden. So let's poke some holes real quick. So let's start with let's start with these holes in the middle. So if we go back to our features. Uh, that's these little custom holes right here. These two right here. Group both of those, and I'll go up to drilling. And under drilling, it's going to grab whatever tool is the default. Which in drilling, the last drill I used was this big old monster drill. So we're going to change this to be the, in this case, maybe a center drill. So that shows me my center drill. All right, looks good. Um, feed speeds, I'll leave that alone. Update stock, yes. I'll leave all those settings there, which is fine. I'll go to my whole page. Now here I don't want to use starting depth, so I'll do a right-click system default to reset that to zero. Through depth, you could leave that there. Depth from feature, ignore whole geometry. Uh, here what I might want to look at, instead of depth from feature, because I don't want it to center drill all the way through, I'm going to say no. In which case, now it's going to give me a chamfer diameter. Uh, now, as for cycle type, uh, let's just do a simple drilling. Can cycle, yes. Uh, tip already included would be uh, yes. Uh, use chamfer diameter. Uh, total depth. Now let's go to links. Clearance. Now, here's where we're going to talk about clearance. Now, right now, I'm going to leave this set on clearance. Now, now I know if it's the first time you've played with TNG, you think I'm nuts for doing this. Let's hit OK. Let's see what happens. 
So what it's going to do is it's going to create the operations, and now you can see the operations show up underneath here in a feature group. And now let's run a simulation of those operations. Right. Now, okay, so there's the drill, showing it positioning. I'll step the drill to drill the hole. It's going in and drilling the hole. We'll play it. Now, notice what just happened. Do you see it? Do you see it jump up above the part? Now, you may wonder, okay, that looked kind of cool. What was going on there? Well, let's expand that. Let's do these holes on the outside. Okay. So let's go back to our features and let's take one of those drilling ops. Let's copy it and let's paste it to these 183 drills, which are all three of those. And let's just do a right click and a paste. It should create an operation and it creates a parent operation. We want to get the depth right. So let's double click the parent operation under that feature group from the from the feature, and it does. 301 is the diameter, so it's getting the diameter correctly from this hole. Uh, let's hit OK. And now you can see that it's showing a dashed line going through the part. Now that's what you would expect to have happen with, um, with an operation with clearance set to 0.1. So clearly that's a incremental clearance. Well, let's pick those two operations around those drilled features. That's these guys right here. And let's run our simulation. So there's the drill coming in to drill the first hole. Comes out, steps up. Now it jumps clear of the part, goes over to the next hole, drops in and drills. This is where I said that the full clearance and such is not as important as it used to be. And that's because TNG looks at the environment completely with every operation, not just three axis and five axis, but every operation. So that now you have the same uh, automatic avoidance of collisions that you have in three and five axis in any operation.